Springboks and Georgia are going to play a game of rugby on Friday in South Africa. First time we've seen the Springboks playing since the 2019 Rugby World Cup final. Georgia have been in action much more recently up against the Netherlands pretty much a week ago, I think it was. They won that one 48 points to 15, although some people who are a bit closer to the Georgians seeing the me said the Georgians weren't as clinical as maybe they could have been. But yeah, we'll go through the squads. I will check the squads in the description as well. Uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how you think this one is going to pan out. It's first in the world against 12th in the world. Uh, but as I said, we haven't seen the Springboks play in ages. And what we also haven't seen a lot of is South Africa taking on Georgia. As far as I could find, they've only played once. And that was in the 2003 World Cup. What were you doing in 2003? <clears throat> it's a long time ago. Uh, and that time it was 46 points to 19, so a pretty comfortable win <clears throat> for South Africa at that World Cup. So yeah, it's been a while. Uh, so we look forward to this one, not only just to see the Springboks back in action, to see Georgia taking on the Springboks, which we don't see very often. Um, I haven't watched the Georgians since the Autumn Nations Cup, so yeah, there's lots to like about, about the games this weekend. What's not to like, I'll just have a little moan first, is that it's still not showing on my broadcast list for my provider here in New Zealand, Sky Sports New Zealand. It's on at 7 o'clock local time from Loftus First Field. It's 5 o'clock in the morning here in New Zealand on a Saturday. Not being shown as listed yet. Fingers crossed that changes. Otherwise, they have to find alternative options, which is not ideal. Anyway, I'd rather pay for it. Take my money. Anyway, South Africa. They've named a side which is pretty familiar. A few guys on debut. And uh, largely a squad which traveled to Japan uh, at the 2019 Rugby World Cup, which is again not surprising. Uh, Ox and Che, Mbunambi, and Nyukane is the front row. Ox is the only guy of those front rowers who didn't go to the Rugby World Cup, but obviously with the beast and Tawira having retired, somebody needs to fill in <coughs> at loose head. And the Ox is a pretty good guy to get that done. Uh, Mbunambi and Inukane, as I said, World Cup guys. Uh, Inukane unfortunately got injured in that one, but he has been a premier tight head for several years now. Uh, Lox, it's a bit there. Mostert <coughs> kind of makes sense with Achias Neyman and uh, Luti Acha on, on recovery mode. So it makes sense that those two guys who were also in the World Cup squad uh, take over. <coughs> it's a bit your big unit. Mostert's going to get through a ton of work if what we know about him holds true. Uh, and the back row, Khaleesi is captain at six. Peter Steph Dutoy uh, is back at seven. And Quaka Smith, interestingly, at number eight. <clears throat> I haven't seen him. I don't know if I've seen him play number eight. I used to watch him for the Lions. He may have played number eight back then, but I don't know. He's a good guy at the breakdown. He's not the biggest guy. It's always been a criticism of him that maybe he's a little bit too small for a loose forward in the kind of game plan that South Africa want to play, but he's very mobile, very good pilferer. So uh, look out for him disrupting at the Georgian breakdown. Uh, Peter Steff obviously had the big injury layoff, but he's been back for a wee while now. The most recent world player of the year that we've got for a reason, and uh, Khaleesi is going to lead the boys, uh, no doubt, from the front. He'll be smashing into some rocks and probably carrying the ball with a bit of fervor. Uh, the 19 combo is the Montpellier combo of Reinach and uh, Pollard. So interestingly, Faf de Klerk is not in the squad for this one, but I understand some of the guys are at different stages of traveling back. Like uh, Cheslin Colby was only on a plane a few days ago, so he's not in the squad either. So it kind of makes sense that the guys who've been in camp longer maybe get the first start. Pollard, it's great to see him back fit he's only been back a relatively short time as well but we'll get to see how he runs the show uh front stain and jesse creel both world cup guys uh at 12 and 13 respectively remember though creel got injured in that world cup didn't he and uh front stain was more of a bench guy but both of them starting in this one so a bit of an unfamiliar combo because we're used to seeing dale in there and um but i'm sure we'll see that combo soon enough and then the outside backs you got Fussy and Speckman both your debutants on the wings a little bit of I don't know discontent that Fussy is not at fullback I don't have a problem with it get the guy in to the Springboks fault there's no doubt the guy's an unbelievable talent he if you haven't seen him play he's absolute lightning very very able defender he's good at the back um but yeah give him a chance on the wing first and kind of ease him into it I don't have a problem with that LaRue is there at fullback LaRue it seems to be the guy who's fallen out of favor 
Um, but yeah, we'll see how he goes. Remember, he was apparently carrying an injury at that last World Cup. So, uh, the bench marks Kitzel from Malheba is most countries starting front row, but in this case, it is a bench. Uh, Ori and Visa, uh, the lock and loose forward cover respectively. Visa is maybe a bit of a bigger unit than Quaker Smith, so it'll be interesting to see what time he comes on. He'll be on his debut. Uh, Marvin Ori is your lock cover. Um, he's been a spring ball before, but still pretty light on caps. Hershey Yankees, Elton Yankees, and Damian Willems are the back replacements. So, yeah, it's a slightly different Springbok squad than what we saw at the World Cup final. It's a six, not a six-two split. It's a regular five-three, and um, yeah, it's a little bit lighter with Quaker Smith compared to Dwayne Vermeulen. But anyway, we'll see how things go. Uh, for the Georgians, as with most of the Georgian sides, uh, pretty much all these forwards play in France for some teams. Uh, it's it's kind of to be expected the Georgian guys have got pretty good forwards but interestingly some of the backs now are picked up you know they're playing professional rugby in France as well uh, not all of them by any means but uh, and I'm by no means an expert but it's pleasing to see the ages of some of these guys and uh, where these guys are playing their rugby so uh, Gogi Chashvili, Bregvadza and Melikadza are the front row so there's plenty of experience I mean 22 caps for Gogi really. Uh, 28 for Milikadza. I think it's always been Gikashvili and Nariashvili in recent times, but changes in the Georgian front row. Brigvadza, 66 caps. He's an absolute veteran. He played in the Autumn Nations Cup as well. Remember, he's been around the block. Played in Super Rugby for the Sunwolves for a while. Uh, Gigauri, he's got 11 caps. And Mikhail Tadza's on 67. Mikhail Tadza, he's the, the veteran. I think if you've watched Georgian rugby, you've definitely seen him play. Gigari doesn't ring a bell, but he's played 11 games, so I probably have seen him play. Uh, I think it was Jayanai at the Autumn Nations Cup, who was their main kind of line operator, but he's not in the squad seemingly. Uh, loose forwards, Tsutsikridza, Saginadza, and Jalagonia. The back row is one of the areas I'm more excited about. There seems to be still no Beke Gorgadza, who's the probably premier loose forward in Georgia, but he did a, I think it was an ACL do Autumn Nations Cup. It was a horrendous injury, one that made you kind of yeah, goose, give you goosebumps when you saw it, not in a good way, like, you know, blood curdling injury uh, with a scream, but um, take nothing away from Saganadza and Jalagonia. Like if you look at their numbers from the Autumn Nations Cup, I had a wee reminder of myself and it reminded me both of these guys get through a ton of tackles. And they're both pretty bloody good ball carriers. Like an area where the Georgians struggled a wee bit at the Autumn Nations Cup was getting a bit of go forward ball. Uh, those guys in particular do not struggle with that. The 19 combo is still Lobjanidza and Abjanadza. 24 years old and 22 years old respectively. So they've got a lot of chemistry coming together. Um, they've played a lot of games. I think Lobjanidza is already at 58 caps. Which is a ton for a guy who's 24 years old. Yeah, uh, and um, Abjanadza's got Abjanadza's got 25 caps. So if that 19 but 19 combo can continue to grow and develop, like you know, that's that's the kind of thing that makes teams better to build that kind of chemistry. I mean, in New Zealand, we think like you know, Maanoni Conrad Smith. Maanoni was often pretty average at Super Rugby level, but put him with Smith, that chemistry just makes you play that extra little bit better because you know what the other guy's going to do. Likewise, familiar midfield combo with Sharakadza and. Uh, Kvesa, Ladza, those, those guys have been playing together. Uh, both those guys have been playing outside Georgia as well for quite some time. So apart from my pronunciation, uh, everything is to like about those guys. Uh, outside backs, Tabladza, Tabutadza, and Niniash really. Uh, so there's no veteran Torua, seemingly. I don't know if he's in the squad, but he's not in the match day 23 anyway. He's a guy who's kind of... Uh, uh, a very familiar name, at least to, to the casual observers of Georgian rugby. But the main guy to also get excited about is Nini really I think he's only, what, 20? I think he scored a hat trick the other day. Yeah, he's proper, proper electric at the back. So he will try to keep the, um, keep the South African defense on their toes, assuming they can get some ball. Uh, the bench, there's only the one debutant who's a prop, Japaridza. All of the other guys are kind of capped and the reserve fly half and um, scrum half are both playing their rugby in France as well. But it is a 6-2 split on the bench for the Georgians as well. So they're, uh, well not for the South Africans, but for the Georgians. So I guess they are, um, they're assuming the battle up front is going to be a pretty big one. But yeah, excuse the pronunciation guys. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. 
to see the South Africans back in action. I'm absolutely pumped. I'm not pumped about having to maybe find alternative sources to watch the game, which I hate doing. Uh, take my money, somebody, to show me this game. But I will definitely have to find a way to watch it. Springboks, Georgia. If you look at the bookies, they say the South Africans are going to win this one by 38 points. Uh, the rugby forecast algorithm says South Africa by 38 points. So 38 points seems to be the general consensus. They haven't played together in a long time, the South Africans. The Georgians have been playing together a lot more recently. So does that give the Georgians a little bit of an edge? They are away from home playing the number one team in the world. So it's going to be tough for them. But anyway, I hope they give a good account of themselves. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think this Georgian Ford pack is going to go up against the likes of the Springboks who are about as good as it gets when you're thinking about a battle up front. And um, yeah, how do you think the likes of Speckman? I didn't go over much. Uh, Speckman, you know, very dangerous. He's got heaps of experience on the seven scene. How do you think he's going to go? How do you think Fussy's going to go? And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.